When convicts were sentenced to transportation, it was usually for seven or 14 years. While serving out their sentences, many convict children worked as apprentices and could be rewarded for good behaviour or contributions made to the colony. If they followed the rules and behaved well, they might even receive a ticket of leave before the end of their sentence. This allowed them to work for themselves for the remainder of the seven or 14 years. Once the sentence was finished, they were free and would then get a certificate of freedom as proof. Or if they were really good during their sentence, they could even get a special pardon signed by the governor. If convicts were well behaved, they could be rewarded by being given more appealing jobs. An Irish boy named Jeremiah Callaghan was transported for seven years at age 15 in 1838 for stealing a brass handle. Jeremiah was one of the lucky ones that had learnt how to read and write. And when he arrived, he was given a job as a clerk at Hyde Park Barracks. Most convicts weren't paid for the work they did, but Jeremiah was paid four shillings a day, which is about 20 Australian dollars today. He later resigned from that position and became the barracks gatekeeper instead. At the end of his sentence, he was issued with a certificate of freedom. Child convicts, because of their youth, uh, when they did attain their freedom, they were generally in better health and with their most productive years ahead of them. So they were really best placed to take advantage of that opportunity. Because it was true, once you attained your freedom, if you had the means, you were free to return to the homeland. But I think it's telling that most convicts made the decision to remain here in New South Wales and make their life here. Um, the example of Mary Wade is a good one. Uh, she was only 13 when she uh, was transported to the colony for attacking a younger child and stealing her clothes. Mary served her sentence, she attained her freedom, and like so many before her, she made the decision to remain here and make her future in New South Wales. Uh, she married, she had 21 children, and today has tens of thousands of descendants who have all helped write the story of modern Australia, including former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd. Life for many child convicts began badly. Back in Britain, some had been orphaned and were living on the streets resorting to crime. They then suffered the consequences by being transported to the colony where they were subjected to strict discipline and harsh punishment. But after receiving their freedom, many young convicts used their newly acquired skills to find work and they married and had children of their own. There were many opportunities for hardworking people in the colony and by many accounts, their lives were better than if they had remained back in Britain. Young convicts who received their freedom in the colony usually had bright futures ahead of them.